Good morning. Welcome to Food for Thought. It's Advent 2020. This is the fourth day of our Advent uh, celebration as we look forward to Christmas coming. Um, it's December 3rd, 2020. My name is Pastor Clint Lang from Hillside Community Church. So the Advent season is an invitation, we see, to stop and, and to quiet ourselves before God as we expectantly anticipate the coming of Christmas and the celebration of the birth of our Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. And the first week of Advent, we see focuses on the hope that we have been given in Jesus Christ. Now, there are many prophets who prophesied in the Old Testament concerning the Messiah, and one of the four, foremost prophets who spoke of the coming of Jesus was the prophet Zechariah. Now we see Zechariah, he, he was born during the exile of Israel to Babylon and, and his writing occurred once the Jewish people were uh, let go from captivity in that area and returned back to the land. Now uh, Zechariah was a contemporary with Ezra and, and Nehemiah and Jewish tradition maintains that the prophet Zechariah was a man of the great synagogue that came together in, when they first came back into the land. And it's a group to, who is believed to have carefully preserved the Hebrew scriptures and the traditions uh, during the period after the exile. So Israel had come back from this long period of captivity in Babylon under the Babylonian and the uh, Persian Empire. Preceding this, uh, we see that Israel had many disappointing kings. Uh, the book of Samuel, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, and the Chronicles um, attest to their history. And the, the prophet points to another king who is coming in the future, who is unique. This king would be the savior of Israel. And Zechariah chooses, chooses to focus on writing about this coming king. And he says in Zechariah chapter 9, verses 9 and 10, he says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout in triumph, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and endowed with salvation, humble and mounted on a donkey, even on a colt, the foal of a donkey. And he will speak peace to the nations, and his dominion will be from sea to sea, and from river, the river to the ends of the earth. So, what a wonderful messianic prophecy given by Zechariah. And according to Zechariah, the future for Israel includes eventually the total restoration of the Jewish people to her former glory. And, and Zechariah, Zechariah is trying to preserve hope. And for Israel, this hope is inextricably linked to a king who is yet to come. He was the one sent from God. As a matter of fact, he is God in the flesh who will step down from heaven and enter human flesh in order to save the people from their sins, the Messiah. Most of the Jewish people thought that God's Messiah would be a mighty conqueror, even superhero type military figure. But here in Zechariah 9, the picture is very different. The king is not coming to fight a physical war. He comes with gentleness and meekness. He is king over the earth. He has all authority, but he comes in a humble fashion, riding on a baby donkey. And this stands in the opposition of a king whom the people would figure would ride in on a chariot or, even, or a great horse, a great war horse. Now, it's not to say that Jesus Christ, in the end, will not be a conquering king riding on a great white horse, but his first appearance, he chose to come in humble circumstances, just as God chose to send his son into the world born in a manger in an, in a, in a, in a, an obscure little town 
called Bethlehem in Judea. Now this passage of scripture in Nehemiah, it provides a picture of a Messiah king, a deliverer of salvation, gently offering his kingship to Israel and to the world. He is a man of peace for all the peoples. He will proclaim peace to the nations, not just Israel. In our world today, especially, we see this. Peaceful people may win prizes, but they certainly don't necessarily command kingly, presidential, or prime minister type authority. Many have come to expect a certain amount of confidence and even arrogance in a great leader. We expect them to do what they have to do to maintain order. And it's difficult to fathom someone who could come to such power on mere, on mere peaceful terms. A king who does not fight with the physical weapons of this world or with the sharpness of his tongue is uncommon. Yet, in this passage, this is exactly what is promised in the King of Kings. And this is exactly what we see fulfilled in the New Testament in Matthew chapter 21 verses 1 to 11 which reads, As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me right away. If anyone see, says anything to you, say the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. This took place to fill, fulfill what was spoken of through the prophets. Say to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey and on the colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. So we see this prophetic word that was written by Nehemiah so many years before, fulfilled in the Lord Jesus Christ as he entered Jerusalem. Now this has brought hope to us who believe because we know that God always confirms his word. And in this particular case, a prophecy was given and it was confirmed in the living word of God, the light of the world that brings light into the darkness. Aren't you glad that you have such a Savior as this? One who speaks to us and confirms his word. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word for the living word that's come down to us in Jesus we thank you that the prophets of old spoke of the coming king who would be gentle of spirit yet have all authority in heaven and on earth we thank you for Christmas for coming and being incarnated and living among us Lord you are worthy Jesus of all our praises We have hope in you, Lord, because we know that this is not the end. This is only the beginning. We thank you, God, that you're true to your word and you said in your word, Lord, that Jesus would come, that Jesus would give his life for our sins and that Jesus would come back again and receive those of us who believe in him to himself, that where he is, that where you are, Lord, there we may be also. God, I just pray for a blessing upon each person that hears these words today that you'd help them to have a wonderful day. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.